Hi, I'm Sam Ibar, Developer Advocate with Polyscale. Today I'm going to discuss how you can get more out of your Neon database by adding Polyscale's AI-driven cache to your architecture. In just minutes, literally, you can be caching all of your cacheable queries, leading to faster query response times and reduced load on your database, while giving you low latency global access to your data. Before I dive in, let me give you a brief overview of what I will cover today. What is a DDN? What is Polyscale? Polyscale and Neon Architecture Overview, Creating a Polyscale Cache, and Using Neon with Polyscale. At the end of this talk, you should have a good understanding of how you can get more out of your Neon database by combining it with Polyscale. What is a DDN? A Data Delivery Network, or DDN, is a term that we at Polyscale use to describe our overall database acceleration platform. Polyscale's DDN provides improved query performance, expanded connectivity, easy access, and scale to your database data. Think of a content delivery network, but for your data. You can easily connect any type of application to your database via Polyscale in any location, including monoliths, serverless functions, and edge functions, all while maintaining global data consistency. What is Polyscale? Polyscale is a high-performance data delivery network, DDN, that accelerates databases. At the core of Polyscale's DDN is a distributed, fully autonomous cache engine. This is deployed across multiple locations and cloud providers, forming a global edge network. Polyscale is wire protocol compatible with Postgres, as well as several other databases, which means it can be plugged into your existing application with only a change to the connection string. Polyscale then analyzes all of the traffic that passes between the application and the database, identifying what queries are candidates for caching. It builds statistical models on every query and defines how long the data should be cached for. As part of its global edge network, Polyscale has proxies that sit between your application and your database. Your database queries are routed to the Polyscale POP closest to your application, resulting in sub-millisecond response times for cached queries, regardless of where your application and database are located. Polyscale also has a self-hosted option, so you can deploy it within your own VPC in the cloud or on-premise as your needs require. Let's talk a little bit more about how Polyscale works. Polyscale uses AI to determine which queries can be cached and how long they should be cached for. Because Polyscale is wire protocol compatible with your database, we are able to parse the queries and intelligently set and adjust appropriate TTLs for read queries based on a number of inputs, such as the arrival rate of your queries and the frequency of change detected in the underlying data. If you pass all of your write traffic through Polyscale as well, we will automatically invalidate the cache when writes are made that impact cache data. If you cannot pass all write data through Polyscale, you can connect a CDC stream to Polyscale to notify the cache of database changes. While Polyscale provides automated caching, with Polyscale you also have the option to manually decide to cache or not cache specific queries or tables and to manually set TTLs rather than use Polyscale's AI. Polyscale's global edge network spans Amazon, Google Cloud, Azure, DigitalOcean, and Fly.io. You can run an application in multiple locations or even on multiple networks and still get sub-millisecond latency for cached queries to your application with global invalidations. In addition, Polyscale significantly reduces the load on your database. Every query served from cache is one less query your database must serve. We've seen customers be able to cut their database spend by over 75% due to reduced load. So summing up, what are the benefits of Polyscale? Sub-millisecond cached query responses, resource and cost efficiency, less load on the database, and easy implementation allow you to save money. Reduced network latency. Because Polyscale has a global network, meaning wherever your application may run, you can get sub-millisecond response times. Unified data access. With Polyscale, you can access your data via TCP, or you can use our HTTP API from locations like Vercel Edge Functions and Cloudflare Workers, or anywhere where a TCP connection might not be the optimal solution. Simplified scale engineering. Because Polyscale is so simple to, imp to implement and can provide massive concurrent responses, your application is prepared to scale from day one. Future-proof performance. 
Because all of the queries from your application run through Polyscale, we are able to provide caching for every query you may have in your application, whether it's one you already have today or one you may build for a feature in the future. Now let's talk a little bit about the architecture of Polyscale with Neon. As discussed before, Polyscale sits between your application and your Neon database. So if you have a Neon database hosted in Virginia with an application running on AWS Virginia, your application will use Polyscale's AWS Virginia POP and get sub-millisecond cached query responses. If you're using multiple Neon branches, you can create separate Polyscale caches for each branch. Because Polyscale has a serverless pricing model, you pay only for what you use, so there's no barrier to setting up an additional cache for each branch. Polyscale has an API you can use to create and destroy caches as well. So if you create and destroy branches as part of the build process, you can create and destroy caches to go with them. Let's take a sample application that has 90% reads and an 80% cache hit rate and a mix of fast and slow queries. With this application and Polyscale, you could reduce load on your database by 72% and reduce average read query response times by 80 milliseconds simply by plugging in Polyscale. As noted, Polyscale also supports multi-region and multi-cloud setups by routing queries to the pop nearest your application, wherever it may be. So suppose you added an additional instance of your application, this time running on Google Cloud Singapore. You can connect that application instance to the same Polyscale cache. With an application with similar characteristics as described on the slide above, you can again cut load on your database by 72%, and in this case, cut average read query response times by 270 milliseconds. Beyond multi-region and multi-cloud applications, Polyscale also provides support for HTTPS access to your database through our HTTP serverless API, as well as our self-hosted solution, which allows you to install Polyscale within your VPC or in your own location. Before we do a quick demonstration, let's just summarize the savings Polyscale can provide. First, we provide savings on infrastructure due to lower database usage and therefore database cost. Second, we provide savings on developer cost due to the ease of implementing Polyscale, which means no rewriting application code and no need to spend time figuring out TTLs and invalidations. Finally, we save on opportunity cost. Because your developers aren't spending time writing caching code and solving slow queries, they can be spending time bringing new features for your application to market. Now we'll begin the demonstration part of today's talk. The first thing we're going to do is demonstrate how to create a Polyscale cache for our Neon database. For this example, I have a Neon database hosted in US East 1 in Virginia. Creating a cache is very simple. All we need to do is copy our host name from Neon, and then when we go to Polyscale, we click New Cache. We give the cache a name, select a database type, which is Postgres for Neon, paste in our database host, the port, which is 5432, and go ahead and click Create. We've now created a Polyscale cache, which is ready for use. If we can like, if we'd like, we can run a network test, which will ensure that our database is accessible from Polyscale's edge location. We can see here that all of the locations on Polyscale's network were able to access our database. We can also run a performance test where we can compare response times for queries direct to the database versus uh, cached results via Polyscale. To do this, we simply input the username for our database. We put in our database password, our database name, and we can run a query. In this case, we'll just do a select one. We can then choose where to run the queries from. In this case, for now, we'll run them from US East where our database is hosted. What we'd expect to see here is, is that response times are about the same because it's a simple query running from the same location as our database. Um, and sure enough, we find that direct to the database, the queries returned in about two milliseconds. And via Polyscale, we can see We've got a uh, miss here and then hits, but all are as fast or faster than even that simple query, even though we're in the same location. Now, if we were to do a comparison from a further location, let's say instead, let's do Singapore, uh, 
um, Google Cloud, if we run this test, what we'll see now is, is that the requests direct to the database are much slower because they're having to reverse a great distance, whereas the request to Polyscale should be quite fast as we're returning from our local POP in Singapore. So again, here you see direct to the database, we had query response times of 218 milliseconds, whereas our queries direct to the database were all in this uh, sub millisecond range. So with that, we've now created our Polyscale cache the next step is, is to use it in conjunction with our database. In order to do that, we'll simply update our connection string that we use in our application to replace our host with PS Edge Global and append our Polyscale cache ID as an application name parameter to the connection string. So let's go ahead and copy this cache ID and let's go ahead and go to our application so here what I have is just a simple application that will connect to uh, our database and make the same request 25 times and show us the response time for each query. This, um, this application runs a query that takes some time so we can see that our database doesn't necessarily respond that quickly. So let's go ahead and run this query. This uh, Let's go ahead and run this and we can see that um, the query we're running here is just a select count star as employee count, max salary as max salary, min salary as min salary from salaries. It's quite a lot of records in this database. And what we see is, is that the average query took 193 milliseconds. We can uh, use the same application to actually put some more load on our database. So we can run four of these queries in, in parallel, four of these series in parallel. And so when we do that, what we'll see here now is, is that the response times have actually increased. So where before, when our database wasn't facing much load, these queries had response times in a sub 200 millisecond range, we're now seeing response times increase into the you know, four to 500 millisecond range. Now, to introduce Polyscale, all we need to do is update our uh, environment variable. So we can replace our host name with psedge.global, and then we just add the application name parameter, like so, and we're good to go. Now we can run the same application again, and what we'll see is the first couple of queries are slow, but then they're much faster. Polyscale is intelligently figuring out what the optimal TTL to, for caching these queries is. And if we run this again, what you'll notice is, is that the time between misses, which are these slower queries, begins to increase. And as Polyscale gets smarter and smarter, it will find the optimal time for the TTL for these database. Um, so you can see our average time is now reduced, in this case, to 15.4 milliseconds. Now, if we were to run these queries in parallel with Polyscale, again, what we'll see is, is that we still get sub, you know, one to two millisecond queries from, from cache. And while the average times are skewed by the misses, we're still getting much faster response times, even though we're putting a lot more load uh, from our application the database itself isn't seeing that load at all. If we return to Polyscale now, what we can see here is, is we can go to the observability panel within Polyscale. And here we can see exactly the queries we've run. And we can see that we've run 275 queries, 244 of which were hits, uh, which means that this is all load that we removed from our database because we've introduced a Polyscale cache. We can also get other insights from here, like we can see, for example, um, the um, average execution time for cached queries versus uncached queries. And so we could look at all of the different um, queries that we're running to our database to identify which were slow queries and which were faster queries. As I mentioned before, Polyscale also gives you the ability to set 
TTLs for specific queries. Um, so if, for example, we didn't want to cache this query, we could go ahead and from within Polyscale set a rule and manually specify that uh, we didn't want this query to cache at all. So if we set a TTL of zero for this, for example, and go ahead and submit that, and we now go back to our application and run the query again, what we'll see is, is that all of the queries are slow because we're no longer caching it. So we really have the power to decide what we want to do. Alternatively, we could extend the TTL here and we could say, I'd like to have a TTL of 10 minutes. And now when I run this query, we can see that we get hits all of the time. Now, if we were to go to a different location in the world to run queries, without Polyscale, what we would see is a dramatic slowdown in the response times for our database. So here's another instance of this same application that is running in Singapore on Google Cloud. So if I run this same query again, right, when I run directly to the database, you can see that my response times are now actually quite slow. And even slower than before because we've got the distance uh, to the database. But if I were to now plug in Polyscale instead, so let's replace our connection string with the Polyscale connection string, and I were to start running this, We see that our connections, our connections, uh, sorry, our query response times quickly get to the, you know, one to two millisecond range, and since we've set a long TTL, they're automatically caching. Now, one question you may be wondering about is what happens if you were to, um, what happens if you were to have updates to the underlying data and you have a long TTL set. So um, we can demonstrate that as well. Here I have a um, application that's going to just loop through and make this slow query over and over again. And again, we're getting these still very fast response times because of the caching in our database. What I can do though is, is now if I were to grab this connection string and connect directly to the database or connect to the database via Polyscale from my local machine here. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to update this database and what we'll see is when I make that update you'll notice that Polyscale automatically invalidated the, <coughs> the, um, the data. Um, and again, if I were to make a similar query again, Polyscale will immediately invalidate it. And again, we can see how even though these updates are happening where I am in New York, Polyscale is immediately updating our POP in Asia. So what have we just done? In a matter of minutes, we've taken our NEON database and added a Polyscale cache that we can plug into our application by simply updating the connection string. Our Polyscale cache gives us much lower latency, both for uh, queries to the database locally that normally would take longer 
as well as for queries globally to the database. In addition, it relieves load on the database, allowing you to get more out of your NEON database. Thanks for tuning in today to learn more about how to get the most out of NEON with PolyScale's Data Delivery Network. Thanks.